Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Steady in Astrology podcast. This is episode 33 and it's about the transpersonal planets, um, uh, starting off with Uranus. We've already done the social planets, the personal planets and the luminaries and now we're on our final furlong with our three transpersonal planets. I'm Stephanie James, your host. Um, I'm also the founder of Steliumastrology.com and uh, I used to write horoscopes for a few publications instead of including, sorry, L Magazine UK and I teach classes now for the London School of Astrology and various other places as well. And um, today's class um, is about the planet Uranus as mentioned and I thought I would just let you know the nature of Uranus is that you cannot really plan with Uranus in mind. Uranus is kind of a bit of a, it's the curveball of the planets and um, it's it, it makes itself known. If you've got an idea of what you want to achieve and get done um, and Uranus is, has anything to do with it, say you're having a Uranus transit or the moon is transiting Uranus that day, um, which it will do in Taurus for probably, I'm trying to think now, probably the next um, I think the next three years it's still going to be in Taurus for three or four years, I think. Um, <clears throat> it just means that, uh, you know, there is there are points in the month and points in your life where no matter how much you try and plan and how much you try and have control over stuff, Uranus is just going to get involved and um, do its own thing and force you to be inventive and come up with solutions um, that you had not foreseen. So um, with that said... Um, the, today I decided to come and sit down and I feel like I've had a really productive time recently. I've got loads done. You'll all be pleased to hear that I'm really ploughing through getting some of the old blog posts up that I've been promising to do. And they aren't as like detailed as I'd hoped to put up, but I've just created too much work for myself, so I'm simplifying it. Um, and I've got most of the Zodiac blog posts up now. I think by the time this is published, actually, I'll have them all up. Um, I should have caught up with my entire backlog of blog posts. That's the hope anyway. So, um, yeah, so I should be all caught up and um, that'll be good that I can just continue and try and be as productive and stay on top of things as I can. It's just a bit difficult when you juggle everything and you do everything yourself as well. Like I do all the blog posts and I do everything. I do all my social media. So sometimes I'm really on the social media. Sometimes I'm really on the blogging, but it's all it's very um, you know, patchy. <laughs> I can't, I'm not an octopus. I wish I was sometimes. But um, yeah, so typically I sat down today to record the podcast and um, I thought to myself, yep, I'm really going to get a lot of work done today. And um, unfortunately, the second I sat down to record, somebody up my street decided to start cutting wood with a circular saw within earshot of my microphone. So the thing with Uranus is I could avoid doing this. Uh, the thing is, even if, even if there isn't a Uranus transit occurring, even if there's not something happening where the planet is actually um, present, <clears throat> if you tend to talk about Uranus, something will happen that will ex it will be an example of what Uranus is capable of. Um, I remember this when I was at the London School of Astrology, we'd be talking about Uranus and suddenly a, an ambulance would fly by outside and the sirens would be really loud and there'd be people shouting and all things like that and you'd just be like right that's very Uranian you know we're trying to get on with something in here and it's really disruptive out there and the same with the circular saw I sat down today and I was like of course I'm sorry Uranus have to honour the fact that I cannot I, I just the show must go on and, and I must honour your presence while we're, we're doing this show so that's a little, if you hear noises in the background, I'm just going to have to say I'm very sorry. Um, it's just because Uranus is being, he's being discussed and he has to make himself known. So um, that said, um, let me just go back over a couple of lovely messages that I got from people. Firstly, I got a, um, a review from Leah and we did discuss Leah. I can't remember which episode it was now. But we discussed Leah and she got in touch and told me how much she enjoyed it and how much she resonated with the things that I said. And um, her review says, can I give six stars? I'm so happy to have come across this podcast and eagerly wait in anticipation and excitement each week for the next episode. Stephanie is so knowledgeable and delivers her content in a well thought out manner, manner which makes listening and learning all about all things astrology an absolute delight. So that was absolutely lovely. I'm so pleased to have had that review. Um, and I said the whole time in the old episode 
I pronounced her name Leah, um, which she said to me that Leah is actually the correct, correct pronunciation of her name because um, her grandmother insisted that Leah didn't look right without an A on the end. And so her, her whole life she's had this problem. Um, so uh, I know what it's like to have a, a weird spelling of your name because my name is spelt with an F and um, people often think that it's um, a PH. But fortunately, it doesn't affect the pronunciation of my name too much. Um, but yeah, people often misspell my name and um, they often they often mishear my name. Sometimes when I'm on the phone like to like the bank or something and I, they say, what's your name? And I say Stephanie James. They think I say Bethany Jones. And it got to a point where um, it was a bit of a joke where I had this like alter ego who was, um, you know, trying to sort of like take over my finances and um, ruin my life, basically. And so if ever something really bad happens, I can blame Bethany Jones for it. But anyway, so there's that from Leah. So thank you so much for your lovely five star and would be six stars if she could review. Um, I also got a message from Art, who I think it was the Jupiter episode. So um, not not last week, but the week before. Art said to me, um, I just listened to your episode about Jupiter while on my lunch break. And OMG, I can't believe how accurate you have described me. You're absolutely right. All my life, I've been looking for a place of belonging and still am. Then he gave me a little bit about his backstory um, and then he said um, during my time here in the UK I travelled a lot around the world with my previous job as cabin crew. It taught me a lot about myself and other cultures and I met some incredible people and gained a lot of experience in all aspects of life. Um, and he also says that he's had um, a spiritual awakening um, and you touched base on that in the podcast as well. And although I do like nice company I find it very comforting to be on my own especially now that I'm more spiritually connected to my higher self. So um, he is so, he said he, um, there's so much that he could agree with that I've mentioned on the podcast and um, words cannot describe how much I appreciate you reading my chart. It's given me a sense of confirmation I'm on the right path in life. Um, you know, that is part of what astrology did for me. It really helped me to think that actually, do you know what, like through all this confusion and chaos that we find ourselves in sometimes, particularly hard for Capricorns and earth signs that like a bit of predictability um yeah it's like sometimes when you go for a reading you realize actually everything is as it should be it appears to me you know I'm I'm in I'm in sync with what's intended uh, you know like I said there's free will I believe there's free will and we have got choice within that freedom of choice but um ultimately it's it's um it's a really positive thing when you go for a reading and you just feel like hearing about yourself and knowing that there's this whatever this is that we're doing with astrology there seems to be we seem to be on the right path because we are in harmony with the heavens and what's going on above us we're in tune with our charts so I think sometimes that that can be really reassuring I know that it was for me I suddenly was just like I feel safe I feel um you know I just I just feel like all of a sudden I don't have to worry about anything because everything is as it should be and my story is unfolding and now I don't have to worry and um, that's that's what it did and I think that that's what it's doing for art as well so I'm really pleased art that you enjoyed it and you resonated with a lot of what I had to say and it, may, it makes such a big difference to me when you guys get in touch and tell me what you thought of the episodes and you know whether or not it really resonated with you basically. Um, so art also said I would love to give you a review but I only use Spotify and I'm not sure if I can do that on this app. I don't think you can on Spotify, actually. Um, it's possible that you could leave me a review on um, my booking website, um, which is if you go on my website, stelliumastrology.com, there should be a, um, a, a menu option which says readings, which I'm sure you could do. Or you could like share it on social media. Like if you've got Instagram or if you go on Facebook, you could just put a post saying, I've been listening to this podcast. I think it's brilliant. Um, you know, and just just share your experience of the podcast on either like you know on your Facebook wall and in fact you can also another place you can leave me a review if you can't use it if you if you're listening on a podcasting platform that you can't actually leave me a review on is um, uh, my Facebook page which is um, facebook.com forward slash stellium astrology UK so um, yeah you could leave me a review there you could share a post on Facebook talking about how much you enjoy the podcast and um, you know not not just anybody who's had their chart read why don't you all do it it would really spread the word and it would really 
help me to get out there and for other people to get the same kind of enjoyment as you're getting out of the podcast and I, let me tell you I can't I can't even express how much I enjoy doing this for you guys when you get back to me and you tell me all this good stuff about how much it resonates um so thank you Art I am so grateful for you getting in touch and telling me and Leah as well um and Cara also who gets in touch a lot of the time and talks to me um and just lots of people basically um I'm really enjoying the engagement I'm getting with you guys but anyway I've waffled enough as per usual um, today we're doing uh, the transpersonal planets. We're doing Uranus, as mentioned, and you expect some interruptions or noises. I'm sure they'll appear and try to zone them out in your head if you can. Um, but the transpersonal planets aren't visible to the naked eye. So um, that's why they aren't included in the traditional seven, which I said was Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, um, the, oh, <laughs> God, Jupiter and Saturn my brain um so yeah they're not they're not those ones are visible to the naked eye and um, the transpersonal planets uranus neptune and pluto are not now these are really are generational so whereas the social planets are kind of collective have a collective in influence the transpersonal planets um are much more slower moving so have a a real generational pull i was trying to describe this to someone the other day um, if you think about the distance, when you're driving along and you're looking out the window, maybe you think about when you've been a passenger and you're looking out and you're perhaps driving to the sea or something like that. And in the distance, you can see the ocean, but it's really far off. And in front of the ocean, there's like a row of trees or something or houses. And then as you get closer, there are other things that sort of divide the, the view. And the stuff really close to the car window seems to be going really fast. It's flying by and you can't even focus on it. The further back you go, it seems to stay still for longer. Um, you can just kind of, you can focus on it. It doesn't really go past in the flash of an eye. Um, and that's kind of how the planets sort of work. Um, you know, you've got Mercury and Venus that are so close that they're almost passing by. You can't even focus on them, really. And the moon does that too, but it's slightly different. Um, and then you've got, um, you know, the slight, like the social planets, let's say, like, Jupiter and Saturn that they kind of be, they're the mid-range planets and as the as you're driving past they're going slower but they're still moving kind of fast they're still you can focus on them but they they move out of sight relatively quickly and then in the, the far distance you've got those trees and the houses and the ocean which tend to be more like how the transpersonal planets seem to move you could look at them and think well they're not really moving very fast at all I can watch them for ages and that's kind of what it's like astrologically when you feel the impact of the planets on the chart the distance um, planets aren't any less powerful in fact the slower moving they are they seem to have a lot more power um, but because it's a much more understated and slow moving impact that you're getting you don't even realize sometimes that you're having these transits we don't realize um, the impact they're having because it's one of those sayings um, that really describes it i think is that you can't see the wood for the trees um, usually when you're in the thick of it, you just can't see quite what's going on until you step back and gain some perspective. So with the transpersonal planets, um, it could be said that they're sort of the background music that plays to the generation. And often um, the pop stars who are um, really popular, like, for example, Billie Eilish, for example, um, who's like super mega famous at the moment and, you know, seems to be finger on the pulse of trendy music and stuff she's having neptune uh one of the transpersonal planets she's having that moving over her ascendant um and uh, when we get to neptune we can we can discuss that in a, a bit more detail um but you see people who have um the transpersonal planets or the outer planets um feeding into their chart in a way that's they're, they're prominently placed so in this case i would say that if they had an outer planet in aspect to their sun or moon or perhaps on on their angles so maybe in their ascendant or midheaven they tend to be um, people who channel the kind of the collective theme through something that they do that they express through themselves so like Billie Eilish for example she has um, a Venus Pluto conjunction um, she has got off the top of my head um, I'm trying to think now I know she's got 
um, Uranus and Neptune conjunct her moon. Her moon is sandwiched between Uranus and Neptune. So Billie Eilish is a um, definitely somebody who is going to be expressing pretty much all of the personal planets through what she does. Um, with Venus and Pluto, probably she's going to create some strong reactions through her um, her pr the presence of her femininity. And if we can look at what she looks like, she usually keeps herself covered in really baggy clothes because she doesn't really want to be seen as a sexual being. Or perhaps I think she might have been advised by her record company to do that. Um, but there is, to an extent, um, this very quirky and unusual um, non-conformist um, kind of way that she, she dresses herself, which I think reflects the moon in her chart in Aquarius, which happens to be sandwiched between Uranus and Neptune. So um, there is definitely, she definitely seems to personify that Uranian, when I look at her, I see very much see her Aquarius moon. Um, but the, the Uranus, sorry, the, the, the Pluto, the Venus-Pluto conjunction, that can provoke strong reactions from people. And as she has been starting to peel off her layers and we see, we've seen her, I think she's created a, a video about body positivity. Um, it's creating such a stir because she's this young girl who's finally um, come of age. And, you know, she's like 18 now. And now she's sort of like, you know, got her got her boobs out almost um, for a video, like not completely. You haven't, can't, haven't seen them completely, but she's. She's wearing stuff that skims her figure a little bit more now. And she made that video of her getting into the water and talking about her body and being her own expression. Um, and it just provoked some very strong reactions. And I think that you'd find that as an outer planet person. So, um, you know, depending on what the planets are doing, how they are formed in your chart, when the time you were born and how they feed into either your sun or moon or your angles, or even, you know, like Mercury, it could be that you're, if you've got... Um, Perhaps, uh, you know, I've got a, um, a Saturn-Pluto conjunction square my Mercury and Venus. I'm somebody who is able to express Saturn-Pluto to people. And because it's with Mercury and Venus, I'm probably able to do it in quite a, um, a, 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 a nice way, like a softer way than if I had like a Mercury-Mars conjunction square that. Um, so anyway, that's just a little something. Um and um, the uh, interpretation of the outer planets are much more accurate by house in your chart than they are by sign. Of course, the sign is important and it tells you about what time you were born in life. Usually when somebody posts up their chart on a um, astrology group um, and says, oh, can you, I, they never include their birth data. Well, you, you shouldn't really. Um, but usually what happens is they um, they say, can you tell me about myself? And when I look at it, I always look at the outer planets and I always try and work out how old they are. And I think, oh, if they've got Uranus and Neptune in Capricorn and they're really close together around the 19th degree, I can immediately say they were born in 1993. Um, and if they've got something, you know, there's usually telltales. Like if someone's got a, um, a Uranus-Pluto conjunction, then they're born in the 1960s. Um, anybody with Uranus in, uh, sorry, Pluto in Capricorn, depending on whereabouts they are exactly, if it's really early Capricorn, I'll know that they were born in 2008. Um, you know, so it's really interesting to date people's charts just by looking at the outer planets. It's, it's, don't, don't, I don't know if every astrologer does that, but it's just something I like to do just because I find it fun. <laughs> I like to test myself. Um, but yes, by house, when you're interpreting your own chart, tells you a lot more about where you're going to express that collective um, essence um, of that planet. Um, and the outer planets really are considered the gods of change. So they relate to universal truths. Each planet is a reaction to Saturn, undoing Saturn in some way. Um, now, Uranus is the kind of like the antithesis of Saturn, where Saturn likes to have rules and structures and hierarchy. Uranus likes to break that down. Um, yeah, so um, let's have a quick look at Uranus. Now, Uranus was discovered on the 13th of March, 1871, at 24 degrees Gemini. So if anybody's got anything at 24 Gemini, you probably resonate a little bit more with Uranus than perhaps you're aware of. Um, now, a nice little quote for Uranus is, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And that is Anne Frank, who has Uranus in Aries on the midheaven. Um, now, Uranus rules Aquarius by modern rulership, and um, its speed is 84 years around around the whole natal chart, so around the sun, 
it's 84 years so it takes 70 sorry it takes seven years per zodiac sign so all these um kind of like if you think about when you were like seven years old if you went through big changes or when you were 14 maybe if you think about um dividing your life up into like divisions of these outer planets it'll be really interesting to think about how the fashions changed or how you might have personally changed and and trace them through your chart um uranus is retrograde for about five months a year the glyph for uranus for me just looks like a, a sort of like a, a weird kind of aerial um kind of satellite satellite and actually it's an they say here it's an h for william herschel who is the person who discovered uranus i think it was discovered previously by somebody else as well but um what happened was it was discovered by telescope through the wobble of um i think another planet was wobbling and they were like oh there definitely seems to be something not quite right um but they kind of said that they thought that there was this planet uranus um and anyway it then got discovered using technology which is kind of what lends towards um uranus being a kind of technological planet um and it definitely is connected with all things modern um kind of like pioneering technologies um futuristic kind of ideals but it can also be connected to really traditional and like old school ways of thinking it's really ahead or really behind the times uranus it's never in step with fashion it's always very that's why it's really interesting to see somebody like Billie Eilish who is just so um so fully quirky like really quirky because she's expressing very much so I think a very Uranian presence in in her natal chart um and then she sets the trend and then everybody thinks that they want to dress like Billie Eilish or they want to like have her style um but they're definitely the type of people that don't stick with one look for the rest of their life they're they're kind of Uranus, I think, is very um, not necessarily shape shifting, but it it just it 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 likes to change itself a lot. And I know when I was younger and I had Uranus um, moving over my personal planets and stuff in Aquarius and over my midheaven, I was constantly changing my hair colour every week. I'd just go down to the hairdressers and say, "Can you just give me short hair?" So my hair would be constantly different every time people saw me. I'd have different hair. It was just just didn't ever want to dress or I just I just constantly needed to express this change in my appearance um so um the mythology is um Auronus the Roman and I can't even see it say it um it's either Celius or Calius in Greek now I just wanted to read this from uh the astrology of midlife and aging this book is by Erin Sullivan and it just happens to be kind of about like the bigger transits that happen in life with the slower moving planets um, and it starts off with Uranus. I think it's a particular look at Uranus, but it goes into other planets as well. But this one says, Uranus is the first planet beyond Saturn's orbit and the planet that demands individuation. In ancient Greece, Uranus was Auranus, the heavens themselves, not a god per se, but more a realm, a domain, a place. That was the dome of the sky, the place of the gods and our sacred and the sacred birds. In the origin myths, Auranus was the consort of Gaia, our Earth, and they created many children. And they did, and they created very ugly children, which Uranus or Auranus rejected. Um, which kind of adds to that story, the, the flavour of rejection that comes with Uranus as well. Whether it's that you reject yourself from a group, or eject yourself, I should say. Um, whether you reject, you know, sometimes rejection can be very much about yourself not wanting to fit in I, I worked with a guy with uranus rising in scorpio he used to say extremely provocative things that were very controversial um, he didn't mind being seen as perhaps a bit of a bigger or being a bit um uh, you know just a bit narrow-minded in a sense and he used to like he refused to have now think about this like when i was saying being really ahead or really behind the times he refused to have a mobile phone like he did not he had a mobile phone but it was a really basic like burner phone and um he didn't want anything more fancy than that he just didn't want it and um yeah basically he ended up after a lot of protesting and saying i don't like mobile phones i hate modern technology you know he'd really slag it off all the time um, and then he finally got a smartphone but he got a really bog standard smartphone and he was like oh it's quite good actually but he just refused to be part of anything like he just wanted to be he was a little bit like um, on Little Britain in the UK. We've got, it's a TV show um, and there's this 
um, the character that says, like, <laughs> he's like, um, oh, what's his name? Played by Matt, Matt Lucas, and he sort of like wears bondage gear and goes about his local village, and he goes, I'm the only gay in the village. Um, you know, comes from like this little small town, and um, you know, like so he's proud that he's like the only gay person there. Um, and it did really remind me of that guy that I worked with because he was, um, you know, he'd he had lots of straight friends and things like that, but he'd kind of he acted a bit like the only gay in the village, and he almost intentionally wore this badge of re like rejection and um, being an outcast or being the only one. Um, so it was quite interesting to watch him do that, and actually. You know, a lot of that, that he, that a lot of this kind of rejection quality and this kind of outcastedness, um, you know, this kind of individuation that he kind of um, embodied was very much himself kind of living that out rather than actually just, you know, just not being so provocative and not being so controversial. So um, actually, this brings us to the archetype of Uranus, which is a rebel, a rule breaker and can be a genius as well. Often, they're, you know, when I say they're really ahead of their time, they can be just so, um, so ahead of their time that, uh, you know, they, um, you know, they can usher in new technologies and new ways of seeing things. So um, the colours um, that are associated with Uranus are kind of greys, electric blues, sci-fi silvers. And I've written next to this, I think 90s fashion. Um, <laughs> in the 90s, you've got like the Spice Girls and there was a, a sitcom called Spaced, which I absolutely loved. That was the late 90s, I think, um, with um, Simon Pegg, who's done a few um, films that have translated over to Hollywood. And um, a favourite comedienne of mine, um, Jessica Hines, um, who I think is now Jessica Stevenson's by her married name. And um, yeah, basically, it's it was like almost space age, you know, it was a time when we really got into like this idea of, um, you know, just being a bit um, more connected to outer space. And even though it was like, oh, as if there could be aliens, like now we're all kind of like, yeah, there must be by probability, there's got to be aliens out there somewhere. But back in those days, it was like the idea of playing with the idea of aliens, um, even though it was looked upon as completely ridiculous. Um, yeah, so the metal is uranium which is um, connected to Uranus. And the part of the body is um, ankles and um, deformities and accidents. So um, I guess anything that really does kind of um, turn you into a very unique individual, um, I guess that can be like not looking like everybody else, the cookie cutter mould. So um, anybody who maybe is born with, um, you know, a disability or something, um, I guess Uranus is kind of connected to that in a sense because you're not going to have a typical um, life like everybody else. Not to say that your life isn't going to be as fulfilling and, um, you know, your life is your own and normal, uh, you know, what's normal to some people um, is not normal to others and what is normal anyway. Um, you know, for example, I have a cousin with spina bifida. Um, you know, her life is incredible. She lives, she's such an independent her, she's got um, a Capricorn moon and she's got Aries rising. So there's no surprise she's going to be an independent, self-sufficient girl. Um, but she's she's really got her life. Her, she's got herself together. Like she's got a car. She's been driving for years. She's a mum. She's got a great job working as um, I think she's working um, in marketing now, but she's like a graphic designer. And um, uh, she's married. She's got a place with a mortgage. You know, like she's really got, like she got herself together years before I ever did. Um so, you know, it's like I'm not saying that it's a um, a setback for anybody to have a disability or a deformity. It's just that, um, you know, it, it, it separates you from the collective in a sense because it's not um, perhaps you're not on the forefront of um, people's minds when they're marketing to you to, to like the, you know, general um, collective public um, and that kind of thing. So it, it does it does separate people in a sense. Um, and yes, accidents as well. Uranus can be the planet where we are more accident prone. Um, we can do things without thinking first. Uranus is kind of a feet first, think later kind of person. Um, doesn't necessarily always think about the consequences before it does things. Um, Uranus is a fast moving planet, like not in not around the sun, but actually it's it's what it touches in the chart. It can speed up in a sense, especially when Mars and Uranus get together it can be like hyperspeed. 
And if you've got Uranus conjunct Mercury or opposite Mercury, sometimes that can be um, people. Can, it can present itself as a stutter where people, um, you know, their their mind is working faster than their mouth can. Um, but it can be, you know, really ahead of its time ideas. Um, you know, it can present as all sorts of things. It's a very interesting planet to look into. Um, now, uh, as I said before, it's the antithesis of Saturn, and in this way, it's to break away from. Um, you know traditions um, and to be progressive um, it's not very conventional um, and uh, yeah it's it likes to break and shatter and reject um, anything that Saturn was about and establishing so having um, you know having uh, the royal family having a kind of institution and a hierarchy it's just so not Uranus it's a bit like the um, uh, the Aquarian mantra, you know, um, I think it was like Animal Farm. Um, we are, what is it, something like, um, we're all equal, but some are more equal than others. Um, the Uranian message is that it's kind of very much, we are all equal and we should all be treated the same. But actually, um, you know, it does, there can be an element of corruption within that system where, um, you know, that guy that I was talking about that I worked with, he used to kind of put himself out there on his own, but he would also act like he was kind of a little bit better than everybody as well. So it's kind of like, you know, he didn't understand the need to, um, you know, be part of the group, but he almost acted as though he thought he was a bit better than the group sometimes. No, don't get me wrong, I absolutely thought he was hilarious and fun and I really liked him, but that's just my honest observation of him. So um, Uranus is the principle of um, freedom and change, rebellion and revolution. Now, I have to say that... Um, yeah, this planet is freedom loving. It doesn't like restriction. As you can imagine, Saturn is restriction. Um, so there's a generation of people, including myself, who have Uranus in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is a freedom loving sign, loves exploration, experiencing new things. And then you've got Uranus in the mix, which just it just adds to that kind of um, uncontainable essence um, that freedom, the desire for freedom can kind of inspire. And yes, revolution as well. Uranus is currently in Taurus, and I think we're seeing a lot of revolutions in different areas um, and I think it's going to continue that way even though we're all locked in lockdown and stuff we've got a new way of communicating and sharing our ideas which it's not that new anymore but um, the internet um, which was partially brought into our existence with Uranus the planet Uranus and Neptune together um, but yes Uranus being the planet of technology new technologies as well um, he definitely had a huge part to play in that so um, Uranus kind of represents this reality that's greater than our ego. So an awareness and an enlightenment. And another great quote by Malcolm X is, I'm for truth no matter who tells it. I'm for justice no matter who it's for or against. I'm a human being and first and foremost, and as such, I am for whoever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. With some, I am somebody who has a lot of um, Uranian stuff in my chart. I, like I said, I've got a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Sag. And I've got an Aquarius stellium. And I think I've said it before. Um, I am always defending, even if it's like my worst enemy, I will defend the person who's being wronged if it's an injustice. And um, I, I completely agree with that, being quite Uranian and being quite an Aquarian person. Um, that Uranus message that um, Malcolm X shared and preached, I think was absolutely something that I could relate to. Now, with Uranus, um, the planet Uranus, there are a lot of things that come with it. Um, so it can be breakdowns and breakthroughs. Um, it can be quite chaotic, actually, against the kind of order of Saturn. Um, and uh, there is this a strong desire for change whenever Uranus transits anything in our chart. When I had Uranus transiting my Saturn, that was quite hard because I really wanted to move and break away and do things differently but Saturn is kind of a bit of an anchor in the chart and it it forces you to um, kind of stay put really um, but it does break away breaks convention actually uh, I think who is it is it Jimi Hendrix I think Jimi Hendrix has a, um, a Saturn Uranus conjunction in his chart and he was very naturally good at like electrics and um, you know he would build his own amps and um, you know he was just a bit of a a bit of a genius actually and um, he 
did things differently. You know, he took the American national anthem and he played it in an iconic way with his electric guitar that, um, you know, has just, um, you know, it's still recognised today. And I think people, I think Janis Joplin also has a um, uh, Saturn, uh, Saturn Uranus conjunction in her chart too, because her and Jimi Hendrix, I think, were born about, like, born like three weeks apart or something, and they're both part of the Twenty Seven Club. Um, and um, yeah, basically, um, they're just both like, you know, take what's traditionally accepted um, and do something new with it and break away from what's expected of them. They definitely didn't dress or behave in a way that was expected. And um, they were both quite iconic figureheads, um, both interesting people to look at. Um, so what else have we got here? Yes. Um, so there's, like I said, with the genius aspect, um, some of the charts that we could talk about, um, you know, if there's Uranus rising. Oh, I'm trying to think if Tesla, maybe I should look at Tesla in a moment and see whether he's got it. I'm going to do it now. Hang on. Why not? Um, uh, I'm sure oh, I've spelt it wrong. That's helpful, isn't it? Nikola Tesla. I think we do have. Oh, he's a B. Yes, he's got Uranus in the first house, and he does also have um, Pluto rising as well. He was an absolute genius as well. Um, if you if you don't know who he is, um, you should definitely look into it. He 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 was working with. Um, I think he discovered sort of like free energy sources and stuff and there's a film called the prestige actually with christian bale and oh is it hugh jackman i think and um david bowie plays tesla and um, he's not in it all the time but it's a great film it's a great film actually um, i haven't seen it for a long time but it's a really good film i'd recommend it um yeah so um you know individuality is another thing i talk about with uranus innovation and um inventiveness liberation as well uranus is, has a sort of a cutting essence a bit like mars uranus can cut us free from our bonds so um you know it can be a sense of being you could be in a relationship where you feel very connected to somebody and in a way that is perhaps not healthy um but uranus can come along and divide you um i i had a i had a uranus transit this was very interesting to observe and obviously very it was quite painful too um, me and my sister went through a period where we, so my, my son is at uh, 1743 Capricorn and my sister's son is at 17, I don't know, 30 something of cancer. So they're, they're directly opposite and separated, separated by a matter of minutes of arc. Um, so we're born basically six months exactly apart. Um, well, actually we're 18 months apart, but it was exactly 18 months. Um, and yeah, basically, um, when we had Uranus squaring, so when it was at um, 17 Aries, that was when it was square both my son and my sister's son. And during that time, we really drifted apart. I just couldn't relate to her anymore. Um, we had a few issues where um, she was hanging out with somebody who I just was like, I just had been um, in a few, I'd had a few issues with that person and I just didn't really understand why my sister was hanging out with that person. And then a friend of mine um, that, uh, you know, was friends with my sister too, kind of fell out of, um, without telling my sister, had fallen out with her too. So it was a, a very strange dynamic where I sort of felt a bit stuck between this fact that, well, my sister's hanging out with somebody who doesn't really like me and I'm hanging out with somebody that doesn't really, really like my sister. So I, I kind of, I played it by the fact that, well, my sister's doing that and knowing that but she doesn't know that this person doesn't really like her, but I don't feel like I'm being a hypocrite because my sister's doing the same thing. So I kind of reasoned with myself and thought, well, this seems okay. Um, and we, we had a lot of time apart. Um, but when that person who was not so keen on my sister finally made it known after quite a while and said that it's irreparable and I can't be friends with her anymore, um, and my sister learnt about this, that's when it basically um, gave us the permission to have conversations about what's acceptable and what's not in, a, in our relationship. And um, it brought us closer together again. So that was kind of like the end of that transit. Um, but me and my sister have always been really close and it was a really interesting way to observe it. By square, like I said, the square is hard to ignore. You can't ignore a square um, when a planet is square, you know, particularly something like an outer planet, um, 
for any planet really, if, if it's square your sun or your moon or any anything really, it's going to wake it up because it gives it an injection of almost Mars energy. Um, and it, it's, it's almost like an irritation. It's like having a label that's just constantly scratching on the back of your neck and it's just making your skin red raw and you just have to, you can't ignore it. You've got to do something about it. Um, so yeah, it's that was an interesting observation. And I've had we all have lots of different transits in our lifetime, um, you know, and our, all of our natal charts are different. So every time one of us has a Uranus transit to our sun, it's going to be different to um, each other unless you've got your sun in the same place or something like that. However, at certain points in our life, we do have um, planets that synchronize with each other because wherever our natal Uranus is when we are born, like I said, it takes 84 years to do a whole circuit of the zodiac and return to its natal position which means that at approximately the age of 42, we have what's known as the Uranus opposition or what most of us know it as, which is the midlife crisis transit. So if you happen to be um, around that age, 42, you will have noticed that perhaps you're looking at life and thinking, well, I've not achieved what I want. It's a bit like the Saturn return. You have to question things and you need to make changes. Um, but with Saturn return, it's more about taking responsibility for yourself, whereas Uranus is about Perhaps, um, you know, if you're, if you're craving more freedom, there, there are elements of the transit that can be incredibly liberating, but there are times when it can be um, quite destructive. Um, you know, like if you've kind of got everything sorted and you've always had everything sorted, when it gets to your Uranus opposition, you can be reckless and end up, you know, wanting to like maybe those guys that buy like a, a, a red soft top sports car and get their ears pierced. And I'm thinking of Randy from Family Guy. I'm not Family Guy, um, South Park. Um, when him and Sharon split up for a little while and he got his ear pierced and got a red sports car and stuff. And it was just like, it was such the typical, um, uh, what do you call it? The typical um, midlife crisis. Um, and there are other ones as well, like when you have a Pluto square, everybody has a Pluto square at a sort of similar time in their life. Um, because these planets take a certain amount of time to travel to um, a, a position. But like I said, they all do their circuits at the same time, like in the same space of time. So Uranus being um, 84 years, the half Uranus transit is um, 42. And you've got the quarter Uranus as well and things like that. And each of these are probably going to teach you about having to perhaps do something that is uh, deal with situations that feel unfair, where you may have been rejected in some way. Or it could be that you are dealing with things where you have to... Um, you have to kind of go out and do things on your own um, question. I, I think there's a sense of morality about Uranus and um, a definitely kind of like higher ideals. And it's kind of considered the higher octave of Mercury as well. I'm very in tune with humanities issues. So it could be that you get quite involved in that kind of area of dealing with things that, you know, you might get passionately involved in some kind of political movement and activism. That's very Uranian. Um, so... Yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting planet to observe in the chart. And if you happen to have a prominent placement of Uranus, then you may recognise um, the rebelliousness within yourself, perhaps being an outsider. The fact that you need to express your individuality and your originality. You can't conform to things, maybe. You're probably quite restless. Um, Uranus is kind of um, connected to revolution and science. Um, I think when Uranus entered Taurus... Um, within the first year of that, we had the abortion referendum in Ireland where women were allowed to have an abortion if they wanted one, which um, it's sort of, you know, whether or not you agree with abortion, um, you know, the fact that, um, you know, it's it, it's down to the individual's body and depending how they got in that situation in the first place, that never really took any kind of, there was no consideration over that, no consideration at all. It was just if you got yourself in that situation, they were condemned and they'd have to leave the country to have an abortion if they didn't want to have the child. So it was quite a revolutionary decision for um, abortions to be um, made legal in Ireland. And that is, if you think about Taurus as the the sign of, uh, it's ruled by Venus, so it's like feminine already, it's the feminine sign. And, um, you know, I think that Taurus is very much a sign associated with sex, um, just in the same way that its opposite, opposite sign of um, uh, Scorpio is also associated with sex in different ways. Um, but I think that the Taurus is kind of very much associated with the physical bodily act of sex, and it's very connected to the body, the physical body as well. So 
it's quite interesting when you think about how these things express themselves. And obviously, you know, um, fertility is something connected to Venus, the ruler of Taurus, um, and the sign Taurus as well, you know. So it's quite interesting to see that Uranus would go in there and there would be this revolution for feminine bodily independence, in a sense. Um, so at best, with Uranus, it can be strong-willed and outspoken and unconventional, if you think these, if these are good qualities. Um, there's a respect for um, freedom. They can be very um, revolutionary and inventive. Um, I think they can be quite inspirational as well, um, Uranian types. They definitely can help you see things from a different perspective um, and you can fire you up a bit as well. But at worst, they can be a bit dangerous, can be eccentric. I don't think there's anything wrong with being eccentric, so that doesn't have to be an at worst, unless, of course, it's detrimental to their um, health in some way or, um, you know, their life path. Um, they can be quite detached, um, which is true. Uranus can detach us from reality a bit. Um, being rebellious. Um, I was very rebellious when I was younger and I guess that's not such a good quality to have, though. If you are a rebellious person, there's nothing to be. Um, I don't think it's, it's a necessarily a bad thing. Um, and yeah, being extreme, there can be extremes with Uranus as well. You can see that with, um, you know, extremism. Uranus can be partly involved in that kind of attitude. And yeah, like that guy I worked with, a little bit antisocial. He was. It's funny because he was quite social and he enjoyed conversation, but he'd go home. Um, he was just a very much a home bod. He'd come to work and he'd go home and that was it. Um, and he was quite an antisocial character. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting chap. So, um, yeah, like I said, I looked at um, uh, Tesla's chart, but let's look at some of your charts. So actually, yes, I've got Carolina. Um, Carolina's one of my earlier applicants to the podcast. And by the way, guys, I know that I've got a few more people that have applied I need to get that sorted. I'll do that later today. And then when I record some more episodes, I can feature you guys too. Um, but Carolina, I'm choosing you because you have got Uranus rising. Um, it's in your first house in Libra. And it is um, in conjunction with your ascendant because you've got your ascendant at 14 degrees Libra and you've got Uranus at 16 degrees. Now, um, it's let's see, what's it doing? Uranus is square your midheaven. Um and it is also looks like it's sextile it's it's sextile your jupiter your 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 mercury and your venus that's interesting so you definitely are an outer planet person um and um with and you all oh, you've got sun neptune as well so so you definitely are an outer planet person i mean we've all got contact with outer planets in some way or another but some people are more in tune with it, the expression of them than others um and with Uranus in Libra, um, I think that Libra is generally considered, if you had Libra rising, you, you'd think, oh, that person is going to be very charming and very likeable. They'll they'll have an attractive quality about them. Um, but with Uranus rising in, um, in Libra, it could be that you have a very unconventional attractive quality. It could be that you aren't, you aren't very con conventional looking, that kind of conventional attractiveness, though you are no less attractive. Um, and... Uh, you know, the other thing is that with Uranus in Libra, I think that when we had a few planets transiting through each of these signs, Libra was very much a sign con like connected with marriage ideals and relationship ideals. And with Uranus going through there, I think that was a, during a time when um, relationships and marriage were really having a makeover and being revolutionised. So I think divorce was becoming more um, acceptable, um, much more widely acceptable, much more um, recognized as an option for people who were in a bad relationship or marriage because often in those days I mean Carolina you are born on the 21st of November 1971 um, at 3.30 um, a.m in Valencia Venezuela so um, in the 70s I think that there was obviously a bit of a I mean the the 60s was a real revolutionary time for anybody anybody born with the uh, um, Uranus Pluto conjunction that was kind of like the sexual revolution um, and birth control was created and so women had more freedom over whether or not they wanted to sleep with people and you know it it, it liberated women in a sense um, but then we've got when Uranus moved into Libra it was like the um, the relationship revolution in a sense so 
it could be that um, perhaps your, especially because it's like a sex style, but kind of like a wide sex style, but still a sex style with your Mercury and Venus, you could be a spokesperson in some way for um, unconventional relationships or female independence in some way in relationships. And, um, you know, it may be that actually um, you don't, you're not a typical, you don't dress like a tip, typically very feminine um, because, you know, having uh, Uranus in a feminine sign which is ruled by a feminine planet Venus and having Uranus sextile your Venus it could be that you don't really want to be typically very feminine looking or girly and so you kind of reject that that typically classically um, accepted feminine appearance um, or you could just be wearing that Uranus very well and doing something very Uranian in a way like maybe Billie Eilish does and doing doing feminine but doing it in a very different way um yeah so that's interesting and square your midheaven I would say that that has got a lot to do with you might actually have to do something that speaks out um in in favor of justice in humanity in some way you could be a bit of a natural activist you have got your Venus and Mercury conjunction and your moon all sitting in the third house and they're being aspected by Uranus rising and actually when you look at your midheaven as well um, that's being squared so that requires action the sextile between your Mercury and Venus in the house of communication the third house gives you um, a platform to share your ideas and thoughts about the current themes of um, the current Uranian themes and whether or not you think they're okay because just because um, you know, there may be something going on. It doesn't mean that you're pro every movement that occurs. It could be that you're against some of them and your reasons for are X, Y and Z um, and it goes against what everybody else thinks. So this is the thing about Uranus. It is the curveball. Um, but having it feeding into your midheaven, I think it would definitely have to, in some way or another, um, um, be expressed through your career in some way. So um, it could be that you're actually naturally very technologically gifted or doing things um, differently. You might be brought into businesses to um, bring them online um, and give them like a, um, an online presence or something. Uh, maybe social media is a bit of a gift for you. There's possibly, um, I mean, to look at your chart, there definitely seems to be an ability to, um, you know, that Sun Neptune, you've got the Mercury and the Venus in the third house and the Sun Neptune they're sitting in the second house and then you've got that Uranus square, the midheaven. There definitely seems to be a technological edge to what you do. Um, and Sun Neptune also, I think, is connected to um, connecting with the ocean of community um, that you can do with the uh, with the Internet as well. So that's you, Carolina. There were so many other people that had really good ones. Deborah Gal, Deborah G, um, Ali B, um, Sammy and LaFlora. You all had um, Uranus in your charts um, in kind of prominent places. Um, let's see. Um, I know, um, Deborah, you had um, Sun, Mercury and Uranus in Leo. Um, La Flora, what's yours? Oh, you've got you've got Uranus rising as well. Um, but yours is kind of sandwiched in a stellium with your Venus again. When you've got a Uranus and Venus conjunction, it can describe um, unconventional relationships again. Could be that you're in a relationship with someone, you've been with them for a long time. You live in separate houses and you have no intention of living together. Or it could be that, um, you know, you have decided um, or you get into relationships very quickly and then they burn out really quickly. Because like I said, Uranus is very fast moving. Um, so, yeah, but yours is in Sagittarius instead of Libra. So I'd say that you are somebody who needs a lot of freedom um, in order to. Um, and you're a sun Sag as well. You've got one, two, three, four, five, five planets in Sag plus your ascendant. Um, so, yeah, you've got a lot of needing free freedom in your chart and oh my gosh an aquarius moon and jupiter in conjunction as well so that is um that's a lot of um f need for freedom for you in definitely unconventional ways and that that uranus rising puts a lot of emphasis on your moon and jupiter in the second house um so issues of ownership and stuff would probably come into it it may be that at one point or another you've had a lot of Maybe not a lot of money, but you've, you've built stuff up for yourself. And then some for some reason or another, whether it's through your need for freedom, selling up and going somewhere or whether or not it's through um, a relationship breaking down and you actually having to divide your assets and you've got half of what you had in the first place. Um, it could be that that is part of how your um, your Uranus is expressed in your chart. 
but I think that you've got quite a positive outlook with that chart. It looks very um, open minded and um, very um, uh, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily get bogged down with things. Maybe that Mars Pluto conjunction might be a little bit resentful and a bit bitter sometimes, perhaps through the friendships that you've got. Um, it could be that you find I think I remember talking about your chart before and focusing on that but there's just such, such a nice uplifting um, and generally positive outlook with that Sagittarius stellium and with that moon Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius it's, it finds stuff easier to let go um, as long as you work on that Mars Pluto um, and yeah you don't let people um, uh, influence your decisions and your good judgment and your positive attitude with their negativity I think that you're probably doing all right with that. So thank you, LaFlora. Um, and now who else did I pick out? Our, our celebrities. Where's our celebrities? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, this is a double A rating chart. Um, I had to pick Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. So uh, I'm and, and I am creating a blog post for this as well. So everything, all the charts and the links and everything will be in the blog post. I know I've been saying that for ages, but it's really happening now, guys, I swear. Um, but yeah, Caitlyn Jenner, born William Bruce Jenner, who was, I believe, an Olympic gold medal winning decathlete. I do love a decathlon. Maybe not to watch, but to take part in. Um, so um, when Bruce Jenner was, um, you know, I, he identified as a, a publicly as a male. Um, but it says here on Astro Data Bank, Jenna revealed her identity as a trans woman in April 2015, publicly announcing her name change from, from Bruce to Caitlin. And I believe that, um, I think that um, she won a, an award for being, I don't know if it's like some kind of bravery, woman of the year for coming out and being very brave um, for doing so. Um, this was all, I just remember how controversial this was at the time, um, because I know that there are a lot of people, there's a lot of trans people um in brazil who are um you know risk their lives they can't get work because they're not identifying as their official gender that they were born under and um you know when they they kind of like forced to prostitution and, and kind of like difficult kind of work that's not legal and um you know the, the trans the trans um the trans people who um you know end up working in prostitution a lot of them get killed because when they they're picked up and then it's discovered that actually they are still partially you know the gender that they are trying to move away from this can offend the people picking them up and it can end in terrible injury terrible um it just it, it can be really awful and you know those people don't have a lot of money and they can't afford the surgery that Caitlyn Jenner could afford and you know i mean it's brave to come out and speak out about you know, against, um, you know, everybody knowing who you were in the first place and being like, you know, a very, very well known trans figure. However, when you think about the kind of bravery that is involved with actually trying to just survive and um, having to resort to prostitution and not having the money for this expensive surgery and things like that, that's when I kind of feel like that maybe the award was not necessarily awarded in the most correct way. But then I suppose if you're that much of a public figure, um, then, of course, if you're kind of wearing that badge for everybody and expressing that collective energy, t telling other people, you know, what I've gone through, what you're going through, and it's OK to be who you are, then, yes, maybe it was awarded correctly. But I don't necessarily think that she was the bravest trans person ever, because I know that there are other people with far more difficult circumstances who have had to go against so much in order to be who they are. So, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a really interesting one. Um, and very controversial and always instigates discussion. Um, so you can't um, deny that about Caitlyn Jenner. And Caitlyn Jenner has, just bringing it over to have a look, Caitlyn Jenner has Uranus trine her sun. Um, so she's got sun rising in Scorpio on the ascendant. Um, and she has got Uranus. I'm just going to have a quick look and see um, how how close that is actually because it could be yes so um it says here that the sun is at about four degrees nearly five degrees of scorpio um and um uranus is at nine degrees and 
Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, my bad. Uranus is at four degrees, 53 of, um, of Cancer as well. So that's really interesting because um, it's almost exact, um, which is really interesting. Now, um, I do find um, Liz Green describes um, people who have like a Sun Saturn square or Sun Saturn contact in their charts as the architects of their own isolation. And actually, sometimes I feel like that could be applied to Uranus as well, because um, I find that those people who have like a Sun Uranus trine or a Sun Uranus square, they can be very, um, that they, their need to express themselves can isolate them a little bit sometimes um, because it can be that they need to express themselves not at the detriment of their relationships i mean if your relationships don't survive um, a revelation like caitlin jenner's did then the people around her didn't necessarily aren't invested in her they were they would it can be hard to understand when somebody wants to change himself in such a way but it you know if people can't understand or get their head around the fact that that's just who that person is um, it's, a, it's a test against your relationships really isn't it and whether or not they were really genuinely there for you in the first place um, oh gosh it makes me think of the Dallas Buyers Club with Matthew McConaughey when, um, when he finds out he's HIV positive gets drunk, tells his friend and then after that they're all like oh you've got faggot blood and like you know like graffitiing and, and vandalising his home and stuff and just how how awful it was for him to have to go through that kind of experience and um, yeah it kind of it it, it it's that sort of thing where people, the people around you, they didn't, I mean, back in those days, they didn't really understand it anyway. Um, but it's that kind of, well, they're not really your friends, are they? Um, you know, like um, I knew somebody who I, I was friends with them for an incredibly long time. And it was only after um, we went our separate ways, really. Actually, I'm talking about an ex here. Um, we went our separate ways. That I realised that he had Sun Uranus trine and suddenly so much made sense to me. He always kind of made himself be a bit of an outcast and um you know he just he just acted like he was it was him against the world basically and it made so much sense to me when i realized oh my gosh how did i not realize this whole time he had a sun uranus trine he had to embody that uranian energy and he talked a lot about rejection and he, he talked a lot about having to go it alone he was very intelligent he is very intelligent um, and um, his Uranus placement also happened to be square my Mercury, and we had a Mercury conjunction as well. Like I said, it's a really good conjunction to have in synastry. Um, but the problem is, whenever Uranus gets involved in synastry, it can be it can it can push you apart. It's that repelling type of energy that you get with a magnet. So um, so yeah. Anyway, so Caitlyn Jenner also has this. It can be that uh, you know that Sun Uranus trine. It can be it can be exciting and awakening, but at the same time, it can be repulsive. Um, it can it can reject um, and it's yeah I think also you can say with Uranus and the sun it can also kind of um, it, it cuts you from it's almost like the severing of the ego in a sense you can say there's an, an, an ego severing in some ways and actually um, Caitlyn Jenner's also got Mars sextile her sun as well Mars is at oh, it's, it's, it's a wide sextile but it's still there Mars is at 048 of Virgo and Uranus obviously is at for, oh sorry the sun is at 442 um of scorpio so there is again that cutting essence and it could be that there is a kind of you know mars so right so the sun uranus and mars are all in aspect to each other and they're all in like what we would say is harmonious or kind of like a positive aspect um and it, it definitely pulls in the identity the appearance and the kind of expression of masculinity and with Uranus in the mix, it has to, it, it's, it says there's a severing, there is a um, a kind of, with Mars and Uranus, there's a type of cutting and just a, a way of doing things, expressing things in an unconventional and different way. Big change. And Sun in Scorpio, there's always going to be transformations with the Sun in Scorpio. They're going to go through big changes. So it's a really interesting chart to look at. Um, I was also going to go into Bill Gates. I will do very quickly. He's got an A rating on his chart. Oh no, he's just gone. He's disappeared. Oh dear. Bill Gates has gone away. Never mind. Let me get him back. Bill Gates. Anyway, you guys should look him up because um, he is interesting and he's obviously a technological figurehead um, and he has got Uranus rising 
um, and his Uranus is in uh, Leo, but his ascendant is the, the late degrees of Cancer. So there's that niche finder, somebody who spots what people need. Um, and he's, oh, again, his moon is up there on the midheaven in Aries, and um, Uranus is trying his moon as well. So um, he's somebody that's expressing that Uranian flavour as well. And, oh, he's got Uranus square his sun and Neptune. Now, um, he's part of a load of people um, like Steve Jobs and, um, oh gosh, what's the guy? Tim Berners-Lee, who all came up with like, they were all involved in like the modern technology that we have in our pockets today, um, you know, with the internet or with iPhones or with desktop PCs, you know, that kind of thing. Um, these people are all kind of like technological figureheads in a way. And um, they all seem to have a Uranus-Neptune square um, or contact between Uranus-Neptune in their charts. Bill Gates has the Uranus-Neptune square and his son's involved in that as well. So and another interesting one to look at. But obviously the links will be provided. You can go and have a look for yourself. And um, I hope you found it interesting. Get in touch and let me know if you really resonate with that Uranian essence. And um, I guess I could just leave it, if I can just find what I've done with that page. Oh, I can't now. Never mind. Um, I'm just a bit scattered today. Oh, here we are. Here we are. I'll leave you with a quote. Human rights are a fine thing, but how can we make ourselves sure that our rights do not expand at the expense of rights of others? A society with unlimited rights is incapable of standing to adversity. If we do not wish to be ruled by a coercive authority, then each of us must rein himself in. A stable society is achieved not by balancing opposing forces, but by conscious self-limitation, by the principle that we are always duty-bound to defer to the sense of moral justice. I thought that just had such a, um, it really did have such a Uranian flavour about it. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, take a screenshot, share it on Instagram and tag me at Stellium Astro. Um, you know, leave me a review. You know how much I love those reviews or send me an email. You know, I just absolutely love hearing from you guys. And um, yeah, I, I'm amazed that when I tried to prepare you all for the sound of wood being cut, during this episode suddenly they put their secular sore away so there you go unpredictable unpredictable uranus again um so next week we're doing the um the second in the transpersonal planets which is neptune dreamy neptune so tune in next week for a bit of dreamy neptune and i'll speak to you then take care bye now